Previously. Yes, I usually do Marvel Legends in waves, but I'm not getting this whole wave. I decided I do not need this Magneto. Jean Grey, ugliest costume ever. I don't need another version of it, but the heads are interesting. Don't need another version of it. Do not need this Magneto. Okay, people, today let's take a quick look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends X-Men 97 Nightcrawler, Goblin Queen, and Jean Grey. And... Magneto. <laughs> I know, I know. In the beginning, I said I wasn't gonna get Jean, but then I saw it on the pegs at Walmart and I thought, you know what? Those heads do look good. And I like how Hasbro has interpreted the costume into plastic form. I'm not saying I like the costume. I'm just saying, it's interesting. Plus curiosity got the better of me. I need to see how much range is in that ball at the waist since there's no articulation in the torso. I was always in for Goblin Queen and Nightcrawler, even if Nightcrawler is more of a body replacement for the Nightcrawlers I already have. But Magneto, <laughs> I saw him on one set of pegs and then another set of pegs and another set of pegs and another set of pegs. And I probably should have waited because I have a feeling he's going to end up on clearance at some point, but Man, that purple costume with the M on the torso is just classic. Okay, it's not super classic. It's not as iconic as his red and purples, but I don't know. I kind of have a soft spot for that look. Then I have some Magneto replacement heads and not so Magneto replacement heads that may work to give it a more comic book look. On top of that, I may have plans for the long haired heads to go elsewhere. So... <laughs> This is more of a play day situation, but I'm gonna open it up, take a look at it here since I'm already doing X-Men 97. Speaking of those, the packages are all branded X-Men 97 with some nice artwork from the show. There's Magneto, there's Jean Grey, there is Goblin Queen, there is Nightcrawler. Warning choking hazard, small parts not for children under three years old. You know the drill. On the card backs, there's digital renders of each of the figures along with the other characters in the wave. And yes, I know at this point, the only one I'm missing is Cyclops. But that head is fairly cartoony compared to the VHS version. And in that aspect, I do sometimes keep my word because when I removed all the cell shading, I said something like, now I don't need another version of this Cyclops. And here we are. The only one I'm missing from this wave. Although if one more person says this looks like Conan O'Brien in a Cyclops visor, I am gonna buy this because the hair sculpt seems to be different. Since he was my least wanted out of the wave, let's start with Magneto. Oh, and now that I have this out of the package, I am so glad I picked it up because my worst fear was that it reused a lot of the first Magneto from X-Men 97 wave one. That is not the case. The reason I was worried about that is because the first Magneto, while in the more iconic iconic color scheme comes off as short and thin and out of proportion a bit. This Magneto reuses Vulcan completely, I, I think. Well, no, that's not true because Vulcan has cuts in the forearms, but otherwise, I think the rest of this is Vulcan. He comes off taller and thicker and more proportionate, and I can't complain about that. I know this isn't everyone's favorite costume, but it's a different Magneto costume, and I can appreciate that because I've got a lot of Magnetos that look semi kind of like this. The biggest reason I bought this was, ooh, look at those shadow eyes. That's just tough. The exposed shoulders was always weird. I mean, why not just a whole bodysuit? It's just to add a little contrast in there because he still has the footy pajamas. It's the legs up to here. And then just in case he gets amnesia or something, he put an M on his chest. Or if he lost his costume, you know who to return it to. Magneto! The cape goes back to being a floaty thing like we're used to with Marvel Legends. Bringing the first Magneto in again. I can't help comparing the two. Here they plugged it into the back, but they also mounted it down on the chest. So it's very secure. It stays in place. It looks awesome. It's one of the better Magneto capes out there. Well, I mean, it could be cloth. There's not a lot of flex to it, but you know what I mean. Here it is just plugged into the back. So once it comes out, it's all over the place. I will say, let me find it again. It doesn't ride up on his face like I thought it would. It does do a good job of staying down on the torso. And that's really my biggest worry. I don't want it up here. It does what it's supposed to do. It's a scarf looking collar. And then the cape comes down a little flat, but we're talking about animated series. Everything I've talked about so far is fairly simple, but you get to the head and that's where the magic is. The hair is bright white. 
And the sculpt is a little soft. Again, we're talking about a cartoon, but I don't know if it's the shadows or if it's actual wash, but they stand out fairly well. Everything is just nicely done up here, including the skin tone. I really like the shade they went with and how it works into the shoulders. More skin tone down here. Maybe I do like them exposed more than I thought I did. Going over articulation, there is hair hanging down. So the hinge at the top of the neck with the ball going up into the head, it does get hindered a bit going up. Not a lot of problem going down though. And I push it there and he suddenly becomes the shadow. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. Eh, not a lot of tilt. Then there's some left, there's some right. Butterfly joint goes back, goes forward to utilize the whole forward. You do have to lift the arm, but he crosses his arm in front of his face. That's cool. Pin coming out to the shoulder, rotates all the way around with a hinge going up to there. Swivel at the bicep, double pinless elbow. I will point that out for those of you who like that kind of thing. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Hinge mid torso gets a few clicks, nice and crunchy, and then arcs back, swivel at the waist. Ball coming out to the hip. I feel like I just did this, and I did, because Angel was earlier this week. But comes up to here, and goes back, and then out about right there. Swivel at the thigh, hidden in the plum color. Double knee, again pinless, has no problem coming up and attracting to his own ass. Swivel at the boot, hinge at the ankle, goes back and goes forward, and then front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Magneto has two fists, and like most Marvel Legends, those pop right out. And with that, you can swap in Vulcan's alternate hands that are slightly relaxed, slightly not relaxed. While I still think those are fairly large, it works better for Magneto's power set. He's just... We talked about the head in the package. He comes with this calm yet serious determined head that pops off. Then you can pop on the angry head. He's just mad at humanity. Can you feel it through the screen? You can. Don't lie. You are now my X-Men. I have this extra Casting Cave Jim Lee style Magneto head and while I really like this, this is unmistakably Jim Lee. It just seems a little too on the nose. This needs to go on the red and purple. Back during this costume in the comics, I always felt like Magneto looked a bit more like Quicksilver. And since I have a casting cave head for Pietro, maybe the stock Marvel Legends head will make it look a bit more comic. Mm. It's hard not to see Quicksilver, isn't it? If I was gonna leave this as Magneto, I would sculpt a little more thickness on the side, but the top kind of matches. That and the skin tone and print aren't near as nice as the new Magneto heads. Or maybe I need to make that white. Would that change it up enough? I doubt it. Then I've been hunting for a new head for Sentry forever, so I thought, if that would go on and I could paint it blonde, maybe, but no, I don't think so. I think it's too small. It also sits too high, which I could fix. That's not a problem, but I don't think that would make the proportions look right. And again, maybe I'll give that a shot with an alternate head because I have two. Nightcrawler is a surprise in the best possible way because it, there's actually more effort than I thought there was. Torso and the crotch piece are reuse of the first Nightcrawler. That wasn't a secret. That was fairly obvious from the promo pics. We could also tell that they gave them new arms because one, pinless elbows, pinless knees, but we also saw that the glove tops and the boot tops were sculpted. That gives it some extra oomph because now it matches the torso, which always had sculpted detail to it. Well, okay, the shoulder pads are an overlay, but you can see the seam line coming down here and then down onto there. While they were tweaking all that, they also bulked up the muscles just ever so slightly. The forearms are a little bit bigger, the biceps some deeper musculature, but even better, check out the legs, especially the calf. It's not bulking him up to muscle man proportions, just enough to make it feel athletic. Even better, remember the crotch gaps on the first Nightcrawler? You could turn these and hide it a bit. On the new one, they sculpted the legs to hide all that, to fit better. So way back here, it looks mostly the same, but you get up on it, major improvements overall. This is totally worth picking up if you want an upgrade. It is the same tail that comes down and wraps around the leg, but you can rotate it around and have it over his shoulder or off to the side or down between. There's options, even though the tail itself isn't posable. That's the only way it moves is the swivel around, but it doesn't look bad in any position. You can put it anywhere. The feet are also new sculpts. It still has the iconic two toes, but everything's a little bit thicker. And not just this way, you can see the difference there, but also this way. The fingers are also thickened up too. Same basic shape, 
But then you get over here and it's not so much a grip. This Nightcrawler came with a sword. This one doesn't, so he needed a relaxed hand. And there's the heads, and that's the big difference. That's what makes this X-Men 97. And this one, well, okay, I did put a custom paint job on this. I want it shadowed up a bit, but the sculpts are different. And they added some cell type shading to the face. It looks good, it really, really does. And I even like the lighter blue, but I have other plans for it. We'll get to that. Going over articulation, there is a hinge at the top of the neck with a ball going up. Nice up, which is great for a character who crouches a lot. Also no problem looking down. Still not awesome tilt, but there is some to the left to the right. Butterfly joint goes back and forward. The shoulder pad isn't super flexy. There's a little to it, so the pin coming out to the shoulder, you gotta kick out a bit to rotate it all the way around, and then a hinge goes up to there all the way. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow goes all the way up. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Hinge mid torso crunches pretty good and then arcs back. Swivel at the waist. Swivel at the tail. Ball coming out to the hip. Kicks up to about right there and back and then out. Oh, that may win the wave. Double knee. If he doesn't kick his own ass with that extra toe. Oh yeah. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, which again, good for a crouching character and then front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, again, he comes with a set of relaxed hands and then he comes with a set of fists and yes they do have three fingers or two fingers and a thumb whichever way you want to look at that out of the package he comes with this serious head somber maybe and while i have it close up look at the nice dry brush on the hair brings out all that beautiful detail that pops off then there is an alternate head that is very very close to the first one but it is showing some teeth so i'm gonna say it's just a little angrier. Oh, okay, he's got some brow too. Pointy ear, wavy hair. Yeah, this looks good. But again, I have some casting cave heads that have been looking for homes. They've been at home on the first Nightcrawler, but now that there's the extra detail of sculpt work and a little more bulk. Oh yeah, hello Kurt. This head is larger, but this also feels a bit teenagery. This brings him up into adulthood makes them older, gives them some age, and some classic feel, which is right up my alley. And then here it is with an Excalibur Nightcrawler head sculpted by Fanplastic 4. I printed and painted this, but it's also been available on Casting Cave. Okay, okay, I am not regretting my decision to buy this. She just looks good for this version of Jean. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying stuff like that. To me, this just feels more like, hey, we don't have anybody with orange on the team. Let's throw it at Jean, even though she's had mostly green and red and green and yellow in the past. But I can't help it. There's a lot of good decisions here. I, well, there's one major iffy decision, but everything else just falls into place. First up is the sculpting. There's these raised blue patches on the bicep. The costume seam right here is a groove along with the belt buckle and what should be a belt. It's not a belt. It's a sash, I think. But then the buckles way up here, comic books. Then the legs skew away from what I'm used to seeing with the Jim Lee costume, but I also like that it's subtle. It's added some detail to it, something to look at, but it's not in your face. It doesn't jump out at you. You have to go looking for it. On the Love Triangle version, these are raised, like in the comics, but then this up here is just painted on. The bracers are an overlay, which I do kinda like more because it gives them more chunk. This streamlined, animated, it's supposed to be. Then I like the look of the face more than the comic book version, but you're seeing the size difference, right? Definite difference in proportions. I'm not really having a problem with this. She may look small, but she's taller than Wolverine. So, and she's got those pinless double elbows, yeah. No articulation in the torso itself, hmm. There is a ball joint at the waist, and she can get some crunch. So it's not breaking up the shape of her torso. So I get that and I like that, but at the same time, she can only crunch to here. Then again, she's Jean Grey. So crunching to here is not a big deal because I really like the tilt. Well, she can do hula hoop all around. There's some arc back too, but tilting and looking up and then I feel like that's better posing options. But they could have done a floating rib cage too. I do love that they've brought over the ring around the shoulder shoulder pads. As you can see, it flexes up and out of the way. They are very rubbery. So they travel with the arm, whether you go up or around, they will never get in the way. I love this way of doing this. And can I also say, Articulated ponytail? Is it a ball joint? It is a ball joint. Look at that. It goes out and in and side to side. 
<gasps> Maybe it's not supposed to be a ball joint. It's just supposed to be stuck in there. And yeah, a little movement, rotate around and then it comes out. Articulation wise, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Because of that articulated ponytail, it can get it out of the way for looking some up. That's a problem with Marvel Legends articulation when they use a dumbbell. It doesn't have a lot of up. Some down, but so much tilt. Looks to the left, looks to the right. Like I said, the shoulder pad rides with the peg coming out to the shoulder, rotates all the way around and then a hinge goes up to there. Swivel at the bicep. Double pinless elbow goes all the way up. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Like we talked about, ball and or dumbbell joint at the waist. Get some crunch, get some back, get some tilt, get some tilt. Just hula hoops all the way around and then rotates. Ball coming out to the hip, comes up to there and back and out. Mm, close. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee comes up. Oh. Hinge at the ankle goes back and mm, not a lot forward and then a front facing pin for rocker. In the package, Gene comes with a right fist and then a left uh, something wielding hand. Is this the one we usually see with female figures? Also, you're going to see some blue hinge right there because there's blue on the back of the hand. Most of the time you'll see this every now and then you'll see that. Then there's a set of splayed out hands, much more power friendly, especially her power set. She's using telekinesis to lift something really, really heavy. Oh, and then I just realized the left hand may be for telepathy for, oh yeah, look at that. Then she could just straight up punch people. But I think I am drifting, okay, <laughs> yes, that does like to come out. But I think I'm drifting more towards this head because one, the hair's down. It's not as animated style, but it also gives her a little bit more age and the proportions. It does bring those up a bit, not this far. Let's try something because it's really, you gonna come off? It's really the head size, I think. The bodies don't look that different. There's definitely a younger, older type thing going on, but if we take this head and put it here, how about this? The other head that came in the Love Triangle three pack. It's sitting high and the blues don't quite match, but that's not bad. You sat it on here and left it for a few months and came back to it. Maybe. Then finally, there is the Goblin Queen, who I think I was most excited about. She is one of two unique characters that we haven't gotten in action figure form before out of the 12 figures in two waves of X-Men 97. I know that was a lot of numbers, but it had to be said. And again, this is not Madeline's iconic look. This is how she appears in the animated series. They couldn't have her near as risque as her costume is in the comics. I did do a custom of that. Again, not near as much skin showing, but we're not gonna get this on pegs. So this'll do me. And I can say that because I have this. So I'm spoiled, I'm biased, but I'm also liking this. First glance, you think, well, it's just a skin tight black bodysuit, but there are some seams. There are some details to it. It does look like a black corset up top. And then there's also boot tops sculpted on. So thigh highs at an angle, and there's a different shade of black. The boots are shiny, glossy black, and then the bodysuit is a more dull grayish black, I guess is more of a dark gray than a light black, but you know what I mean. Pinless elbows, pinless knees. I think these are reuse from Shriek maybe, which I think I used for the custom. And then the feet with the very high heels are from the Emma Frost. I think it was the Walgreens version, the black costume. The cape is a stiff piece of plastic just hanging on the back. There is a peg, but because of the arch of her back, you don't even need to plug it in for it to look right. But it stays on because it's glued under the brooch or the amulet or whatever this is. It is recognizable from the comic books, so I do like that. With the cape coming down to these points and kind of torn at the bottom alongside the boots, you know where I'm going with this. We are gonna attempt to stand her up on cam... Okay. It just happens to be in the perfect position. Again, the arc of the back, the heels, the legs, the ankles, you get ever so slightly off that perfect position, falling back, falling forward. You have to get her feet on the ground and then just micromanage. Don't breathe. Finally getting to the face. This is just 
great. I love the look here. The skin tone is rosy and it's very apparent against the black costume. You can see the red tint to it. And then the fiery orange hair. Again, animated style a bit, not as detailed as we see with other Marvel Legends, but again, it's cartoon. It's supposed to be that way. But the photo reel's so nice that it doesn't look out of place with your comic book figures. So it's double duty. It'll work in any display. But you know this big head of hair is going to get in the way of articulation. Up top, there is a dumbbell joint. No looking up. She's gonna arc up before she looks up. Some down though. Gets in the way of tilt too and you gotta kind of crank to go left and right. Pin coming out of the shoulder rotates around. You gotta kind of angle out for the cape and the hair and then a hinge goes up to there. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow like we've seen many times before all the way up. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Dumbbell joint mid torso. Not a lot of forward but arc back. Tilt and tilt and rotation. Ball coming out to the hip. Ooh, that is very, very tight. Comes to there and no back whatsoever because it runs into the butt flap and then out. Doesn't win the wave, but not bad. Thigh swivel is brought down to the rounder part of the leg, although I think they did that just to keep from breaking this diagonal sculpt. That rotates around. Double knee comes up, not quite all the way even with that high heel. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, and there's a down facing pin. There's no plastic, it's a high heel. There's nothing to go forward into. So it just kind of swivels on the end of the leg there. For accessories, she has these power wielding hands, which again, I think we've seen on many, many a female in Marvel Legends. And then there's two fists, but I'm not gonna plug them in because I don't think of Goblin Queen as a fisticuffs kind of girl. I think of her as more magical, and thankfully she comes with these two effects. We've been seeing these for years. As long as it looks like she's spell casting or using her power or whatever, there's no wrong way. In fact, my favorite way to use them is something like this. The power is just seeping out of her hands. But there's also something like this, whatever you want to use it for. Then there's baby Nathan, who I think we've seen sculpt wise a couple of times. A baby Hulk in the old man Logan and Hawkeye two pack. And then I think it was baby Nightcrawler with Mystique. I don't remember if the head sculpts are the same or not, but it's a baby wrapped up in an X blanket. Size-wise, Goblin Queen stands at about six and three-eighths. Nightcrawler is about six and an eighth. Jean is at six and a sixteenth. And then Magneto is about six and seven sixteenths. I'm bringing Scott and Logan in for size comparison with Jean. And here, she looks fine next to them. She's shorter than Cyclops. She's taller than Wolverine. Looks okay. She's okay next to the X-Men 97 Series 1 Magneto. And then the new two-pack Sabretooth is bigger than everyone, or at least everyone I have here on the table, but he does look good. <clears throat> Again, I feel like this Magneto should be the size of this Magneto, and even then, could be more torso -ier. Is that even a word? You know what I mean. More bulky in the core, but looks appropriately sized next to Cyclops and Wolverine. Goblin Queen stands fairly tall, but that's mostly all in the heels. Head size and proportions lines up fairly well. And then if you have the old Nightcrawler, you know exactly how he compares. This completely works. So at the end of the day, it definitely wets the X-Men whistle. Nightcrawler is the surprise upgrade. They improve the costume details immensely while tweaking his size, while tweaking his shape. Magneto's also a surprise. I expected him to be like the first one, a little squat, a little short, a little thin, but he's not. And then the Goblin Queen, I said it a minute ago, she looks very adult. Not as adult as she does in the comics. This is based on a cartoon. It is a figure of Goblin Queen, so I'm, I'm happy to get it. By itself, take away all the figures around it, I love the look of this jean, even though I hate the costume. And you know I had to get it in there again. Maybe there's a custom possibility that I don't see yet. Hey, I'm just making lemonade. Not that these are lemons, just because I planned on customizing half of them.